All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're gonna be in the 147 pound division where there's a champion that very well may be waiting on another champion. Terrence Bud Crawford, his camp, responds to Devin Haney saying that he is looking to come up to 147 pounds and Devin gets a giggle out of him. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're gonna be in the 147 pound division where we've got some of the best fighters in all of boxing, the number one pound for pound fighter in boxing, the number one young champion as far, in my opinion, as far as skill set and talent and all that goes in all of boxing, Jerron Boots Ennis. And we have an, a fighter who many of his fans claim <clears throat> is a Hall of Famer waiting to retire and the number one pound for pound fighter in the world, according to many of them, Devin the Dream Haney. In a live stream, Ter a member of Terrence, Cr Terrence Crawford's camp responded to the, the reported desire of Devin Haney to move up to 147 pounds and the fact that he was looking for fighters like Mario Barrios, uh, virtually retired Keith Thurman, where people are saying and asking, well, Devin can't make 140 pounds anymore because it must be difficult seeing as he's gaining 25 pounds after the weigh-in. He's going to be at 147 pounds very quickly. So what about Terrence Crawford? What about Jerron Ennis? Now, for me personally, I think this is a very fair conversation, seeing as Devin Haney left 135 pounds, and people are still talking about, what about Javante Davis? Now, before I get into details and what was said, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, uh, so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And if you're a longtime subscriber and supporter of the channel, Thank you so much for your continued support. I really, really appreciate it. Okay, now I gotta say something because uh, enough of you trolls come into this comment section. Oh, I'm sorry, let me rewind before I talk to you trolls. And let me talk to you supporters. Thank you guys so much for supporting in the super thanks of videos like this. There's been an a, a increased number of people that have, that have been sponsoring the channel in that way. Thank you so much. It really does go a long way to me being able to continue to do what I do and us to be able to have the conversations that we have, which I am telling you, despite what the trolls are saying, is an honest conversation about boxing, looking at boxing in a way where I am not playing favorites on for one guy or another. If I like a particular fighter and I like a particular fighter style or personality, I'll tell you that without a doubt. I love Deontay Wilder's personality, love him as a fighter, think he's an excellent fighter, but that would not stop me at all from telling you that, oh man, I think this Joseph Parker fight can be more difficult for Deontay Wilder than some people are expecting uh, or people are saying. I don't expect, even though Deontay very well and very well likely knocked this dude out. Hey man, Joseph Parker got some things coming, right? I'm gonna tell you what I think, right? Based off the information that I know and I'm not in bed with any particular fighter. However, the people that are in bed or wanna get in bed literally with some of these fighters, you guys get on my nerves because you make it very hard with your storytelling and your um, soundbite clipping for people to really even know what's going on. 
And boxing is more than complicated enough when understanding how the sanctioning bodies work, how the ranking systems of those sanctioning bodies work, how mandatories work, right? Purse, how purse bids work, how um, what the A side is, what the B side is, what negotiations are, and what fights are actually possible, and what fighters are not possible, what fights are not possible, what promoters. Who, what fighters with what manager and what ma and what fighters with what promoter and what's the relationship with the pro promoters and the all of that stuff is complicated enough without y'all flat out lying and making stuff up, okay? Because that is just pouring you're just pouring mud and dirty and already dirty ink and dirty water, okay? Man, so back to sorry I digress a little bit I had to go on that when we're gonna talk about this stuff with with Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford's team member, Bernie the Boxer, said that they, when asked about uh, what is he, what does he think about Ter about Devin Haney moving up to 147 pounds to fight, and he said, "Look, man," they were like, "Yeah, Devin looked really, really good, looked great against um, Regis Progray, but he better stay away from Terrence Crawford," and re and and. Bozy Ennis, who is a hundred, whose son is um, uh, Boots Ennis, the IBF 147 pound champion. Now, mind you, I'm talking about champions at 147. Champions, the two champions at that in that division, Errol Spence, who's got three belts, WBC, WBA, and WBO, and Jerron Ennis, who has the IBF. If Devin Haney is going to move up, he's got to run into those two guys. Unless he, of course, does what I expect, which is wait until until Terrence drops the belt to come up and try to fight for a vacant one. Because Devin is going to be strategic with that. Just like he was strategic in leaving 135 to 140 and who he fought at 140 and who he will not fight at 140. But I, I digress again. If they basically say, look, man, Devin is not ready for that. And one of the things that I thought was interesting out of um, Philadelphia, a, tr a trainer, former boxer named Greg Hackett, uh, who I think was very, is a very fair and um, very fair, very uh, intelligent and knowledgeable um, boxing commentator, right? Very, very good, man. Uh, said when talking about Devin moving up to fight Jerron, he said, well, you know, I wouldn't do that right now and you know you may want to take more times with that and then because i think that he's being you know i think he's being very very fair again very fair and and very uh judicious in his comments then he says kind of with a little turn of the head and he's <laughs> it was funny to me little turn of the head a little lick of the lips <laughs> says well you know even if it's two years from now it may be the same thing. <laughs> and that's exactly what it will be. However, the reason that I think that this conversation is important, though, is that that is where Devin Haney is, he is headed. With one at weighing in at 165 pounds, the day, the day after a 140 pound weigh in, tells you that he is already bigger when he walks this, on the same day, bigger than Jerron Ennis is at 147 pounds. Now, how do we know that? We know that because Jerron Ennis is the IBF champion and he is not unified. Remember how I said earlier in the video that it's difficult enough to know the rules? Uh, there's an IBF rule, a rehydration limit for the IBF. And they only allow their champions to gain 10 pounds, no more than 10 pounds, the day but in between the weigh-in and the day of the contracted weight on the day of the of the day of the weigh-in and the day of the fight. You can only gain 10 pounds before that weigh-in. So when Gervonta Day when 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 Jerron Ennis weighs in at 145 pounds, because he weighs in at 145 pounds. He doesn't weigh in at 147. He weighs in at 145, sometimes 146. But let's just say he weighs in at 147 on a nose. He weighs in the next day at 157. That's eight pounds lighter than Devin Haney weighed in the, the next day 
for Regis Progray. So they're already the same size. So what I think people should be doing in boxing, seeing as there are weight classes, I don't think we should be having conversations about people fighting that are not in the same weight class. I think that that is just fool's gold. It's silliness. Uh, Jermonte Davis doesn't need to fight uh, Ger- uh, Devin Haney because De- because first of all, Mario Barrios, who he did fight, isn't weighing in at 165. He's not weighing in at 165. He weighed in at 150 pounds the next day. That's 15 pounds lighter than Devin Haney weighed in. So, no, they don't need... If, and now, if Gervonta decides to, to go do that, cool. Even these people say, well, he's never going to be great. He need, dude, you don't... You, there are plenty of fighters that have been great that had never moved up in weight. Why does Gervonta Davis have to move up in weight? in order to be great that's stupid um marvelous marvin Hagler never moved up to be great did he i don't think he did aaron Pryor never moved up in weight to be great did he i don't think he did i don't think he did some other people do that some other people do that and they are great but there are plenty of examples of people that were great fighters This stayed in their weight class. Matter of fact, uh, all of the heavyweights stayed in their weight class because there was nowhere else to go. So how can you have to move up in weight to be great? That's ridiculous. And most of these weight classes didn't even exist when many of these fighters were being great. Just a bunch of malarkey trying to push people down the rows of of just watch me and listen to me bump my lips. (laughs) That's the only only way I can take it. But anyway, that's my take on the situation. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Deuces. (laughs) 